Hi friends, I have some things on this table here and you need to tell me which of these things contain the element carbon. So let's see what do we have here. Here I have a piece of coal, some chalk, a pencil, diamond ring and some sugar in the bowl here. So what do you think? How many out of these five things contain carbon? That's right. The correct answer is all five things. Let's start with coal. Coal mainly contains carbon. Chalk is calcium carbonate, CaCO3. So it's a compound containing carbon. The pencil lead is made of graphite, which is a form of carbon. And do you know that diamond is also a form of carbon? Now what is the formula of sugar? That's right, C12H22O11. So sugar is a compound also containing carbon. That's the magic of chemistry. All these things look so different, but they all contain the element carbon. Now detective, let me ask you, are there any other things here that contain carbon? Wood contains carbon. So this wooden table here is made of carbon. There's carbon dioxide in the air. So we have carbon again there. And you and I, we are made of carbon. In fact, all living things contain carbon. Carbon is said to be the element of life. And in this video, we look at the different forms of the element carbon. And as usual, we'll finish off with our top three questions on this topic. As we discussed, carbon is present in so many different things. We can divide the occurrence of carbon into two types, free state and combined state. Free state means that carbon occurs as an element and combined state means carbon occurs in a compound combined with other elements. So let's divide the things on this table here into these two types. Graphite and diamond are examples where carbon occurs as an element. So let me shift them here next to coal. Because coal mainly contains carbon. In chalk and sugar, carbon occurs as a compound combined with other elements. Chalk has the formula calcium carbonate, CaCO3. And sugar has the formula C12H22O11. So these two things are compounds of carbon. Now how do we test that all the things here on the table contain carbon? One simple way is to burn all of them in air. And that will produce carbon dioxide gas, which we can test with the lime water test. The lime water is going to turn milky. And so we'll know that all these things contain carbon. In this video, we'll focus on the forms of carbon where carbon exists as an element. Diamond, graphite, and instead of coal, we'll look at a form of carbon called Buckminster fullerene. Hold on, how many letters is that? I think that's the longest word in our chemistry textbook. So do you know what is common to diamond, graphite and Buckminster fullerene? These are forms of carbon where carbon exists as an element. But the carbon atoms are in a crystalline structure. They have a regular geometric shape. So we'll look at these three forms in detail in this video. Before we talk about different forms of carbon, let's first talk about carbon itself. Carbon is an element. And it has a symbol C. Carbon is a non-metal. Do you know what is the valency of carbon? That's right. The valency is 4. Carbon is tetravalent. Do you know what type of bonds does carbon form? Ionic or covalent? That's right. Carbon forms covalent bonds. Carbon has the atomic number of 6. So its electron configuration is 2,4. Since it has 4 electrons in its valence shell, it finds it hard to gain 4 electrons or lose 4 electrons. 
So carbon ends up sharing four electrons to attain its stable state. And sharing of electrons means covalent bonds are formed. We can visualize this using our model here. Let's say this black ball here is a carbon atom. And these white balls represent hydrogen atoms. Can you see that there are four sticks coming out of the carbon atom? These represent the bonds. So carbon has four single covalent bonds. Carbon has a unique property, not only to combine with other atoms, but also with itself to form long chains. For example, in this model here, I have a chain of four carbon atoms. The carbon atom is small in size. So the bonds between the carbon atoms are very strong. The chains are stable and don't break easily. In this example, we have a chain of only four carbon atoms. But we can have much larger chains containing a huge number of carbon atoms. This self-combination property of carbon is known as catenation. Here the chain is pretty small, just four carbon atoms. But the chain can be much, much longer than this. And so this catenation property and high valency of four of carbon leads to the formation of millions and millions of compounds. As we discussed, carbon can occur in a free state, as an element, or in a combined state in a large number of compounds. In this video, we'll focus on carbon in the free state, as an element. Now the various physical forms in which an element can exist are known as allotropes of the element. Allotropes of carbon are of two types, crystalline and amorphous. Crystalline allotropes are diamond, graphite and fullerene such as Buckminster fullerene. The amorphous allotropes are coal, charcoal, lamp black, soot. Crystalline means that the substances have a regular geometric shape. And amorphous means that there is no regular geometric shape. It has a powdery form. Here we will focus on the three crystalline forms of carbon. Diamond, graphite and Buckminster fullerene. Let's start with diamond. Diamond is colorless and transparent and it sparkles under light. Do you know which is the hardest known natural substance? The answer is diamond. Let's talk about the other properties of diamond. Diamond does not conduct electricity and it burns on strong heating to produce carbon dioxide only. So that proves that diamond is only made up of carbon atoms. Of course, you don't want to burn it off since it's really expensive. This small diamond crystal is actually a gigantic molecule made up of carbon atoms only. Let's visualize it using this model here. Here I have a model of what the structure of diamond looks like. As you can see, each carbon atom is linked to four other carbon atoms by strong covalent bonds. The four surrounding carbon atoms are at the vertices of a regular tetrahedron. Since every carbon atom is bonded to four other carbon atoms, the structure is very rigid. Note that this model represents only a small part of the structure. The actual diamond structure is a gigantic molecule containing a huge network of carbon atoms. Its structure is very rigid. That's why diamond is the hardest known naturally occurring substance. Diamond is used for making glass cutters and strong drills. It has a very high melting point. Now why is diamond a non-conductor of electricity? Let's take a closer look at its structure. As you can see here, each carbon atom is bonded to four other carbon atoms. As we know, carbon has four valence electrons, but all the four electrons are used up in covalent bonds. So there are no free electrons. Hence, diamond does not conduct electricity. 
Now let's look at the next form of carbon, graphite. Graphite is very different from diamond. Graphite is grayish black and opaque, whereas diamond is colorless, transparent and it sparkles. Graphite is soft and slippery to touch, but diamond is very hard. Unlike diamond, graphite is a good conductor of electricity. So graphite and diamond have very different physical properties, but they have the same chemical properties because they are just made up of carbon atoms. For example, if you burn graphite on strong heating, you're going to get carbon dioxide only, just like diamond. So why do these two things have different physical properties? The answer lies in the arrangement of the atoms. So to understand that, let's take a look at the arrangement of the atoms in graphite. So here I have a model of the atoms in graphite. Let's look at the structure of graphite. Here I've just shown one layer of carbon atoms. As you can see, the graphite structure is different from diamond. Each carbon atom is bonded to three other carbon atoms by strong covalent bonds to form flat hexagonal rings here. Graphite has many layers of carbon atoms. So let me bring in another layer of carbon atoms here. The layers are far apart and they are held by weak forces known as van der Waals forces. These layers can slide over one another, making graphite soft and slippery. Graphite is a soft substance. That's why it's used in pencils for writing and it's used as a dry lubricant for machine parts that operate at a high temperature because graphite is non-volatile. Now why is graphite a good conductor of electricity? Carbon has four valence electrons. Again, I'm showing only one single layer of carbon atoms here. In graphite, as you can see, each carbon atom is bonded to three other carbon atoms. So three electrons are used in the bonds here. And one electron is free. So every carbon atom in graphite has one free electron. And the presence of a large number of free electrons makes graphite a good conductor of electricity, which is why graphite is used for making electrodes. Now let's talk about fullerenes. Fullerenes are an allotrope of carbon having the shape of a hollow sphere, ellipsoid or many other shapes. The most famous ones are the spherical fullerenes, known as Buckminster fullerene or buckyballs. The Buckminster fullerene looks like a football. The carbon atoms are arranged in a football shape like this, where each edge here is a carbon atom. This molecule contains 60 carbon atoms, so it's C60. In a football, there are 20 hexagons. So these white hexagons here and 12 pentagons. The black pentagons here and all of these contain carbon atoms on their edges. So in the Buckminster fullerene molecule, we have a total of 60 carbon atoms. Buckminster fullerene is named after the architect Buckminster Fuller because he used a similar football design in his work. This is a dark solid at room temperature. Now let's compare its structure with that of diamond and graphite. Remember we saw the structure of diamond and graphite? But note that this is only part of the structure. The actual molecule of diamond and graphite is gigantic because it's an unending network of carbon atoms. So you can imagine there are many, many more carbon atoms linked here. We are only looking at part of the structure. Now let's talk about Buckminster fullerene. So even though this football looks very big, the actual molecule is very small and it's compact because it contains only 60 carbon atoms 
and as we discussed, they are found on these edges here. Remember, diamond is hard, graphite is soft, and Buckminster fullerene is somewhere in the middle. It's neither hard nor soft. Now, what about their chemical properties? That's right, all three of them, diamond, graphite, and Buckminster fullerene, burn to produce carbon dioxide only because they only contain carbon atoms. Carbon also has amorphous allotropes such as coal, charcoal and lamp black. But in this video, our focus was on the three crystalline allotropes of carbon. Now that we are done with the concepts, are you ready for the top three questions on this topic? Friends, try solving these questions and let me know your answers and doubts by putting it in the comments below. I promise to reply to all your comments as soon as possible. So I'll disappear and you pause the video here and give these questions a shot. In this video, we looked at carbon, the element of life. We saw different forms of the element carbon. Carbon also exists in compounds. In fact, there are millions and millions of compounds containing carbon. But we'll look at that in a separate video. And if you like this video, go hit the subscribe button for my YouTube channel right now. And do check out my website, manochaacademy.com. You can also like and follow my Facebook page. Thanks for watching.